Hey everybody and welcome to another edition of Lane Side Reviews and on this episode we're going to be taking Deadly Aim at the newest Hammer release. Alright guys, so welcome back. As always, I am Rob Johnson, joined once again by Scoops Porter, and as we said, we're going to be looking at Hammer's newest release, The Deadly Aim. Now, we're actually going to break this down into two parts, because there's a couple of things that we really want the viewer to know about. And the first one is, well, what this ball is designed for. If you guys have watched the, the Hammer video talking about it, they don't actually say what condition this ball's for. So what did you find, Scoops? Uh, I found it fits really well in the medium area. Um, more yeah, it's, more yeah, like a yeah, typical it's, house yeah. shot, a little bit heavier. Yeah. Um, not quite your super heavy oil ball, but definitely a uh, traction can. Yeah. So uh, for those of you who are looking for a ball, there's especially one that uh, can get down the lanes nicely with a lot of back end, the deadly aim from Hammer's pretty good. Now the second part is about the science behind this ball. Uh, as you know if you've watched the video, they've added the carbon fiber to the ball to uh, make it perform a little differently. What did you think about it? Um, well, we found that it sounds different when it hits the pins. Like, we were doing stuff and when Wayne was practicing with it, we all turned around and looked because it didn't sound like your typical ball when it hit the pins. But pin carry, wow, it kept the pins flat and scooted them across, but it it blew them away. Yeah, one of the things they talked about was uh, energy transference, and you can actually see and hear the difference when this ball hits the pins. Um, like Scoops was saying, the pins are actually knocked downwards, and, and while we didn't see a lot of scouts coming off the sideboards, we also didn't see a lot of plaque tens or uh, soft tens. The pins were really kept down on the deck, rolling backwards, knocking things down. So uh, why don't we take it to how we had it drilled up, and we'll see how it stacks up lane side. Alright guys, here we have Wayne Porter, our low rev, low speed player. Yeah, he's bowling on the Kegel Main Street oil pattern. Now Wayne is playing uh, in between about 11 and 12, looks like pulling it out to about 8. eight. Yeah, I'm just kind of rolling it out. You can see that one he got a little bit wider at the start, but Lots came of finish. Out nice. Yeah, yeah. That's one thing with this ball I found, it had very strong um, reaction off the, off the oil. Yeah. Um, now, with Wayne, Wayne really liked this ball. He was able to, you can see he's playing up the back of it. It had lots of energy down lane for him. Yeah. Uh, and when he missed out to the right, it definitely had some carry back. Yeah, it bounced back for him nicely. Good recovery. Gave him some room to play. You see, he has another one that was outside. It was like, looked like about 8.5. Like, yeah. And he's just scattering the pins, which means, just, to me, it's just got lots of energy still in the bag. Yeah, now, and, and as we said before, even though he was scattering the pins, it's not a lot of messengers. Yeah. It's a lot of pins being knocked yeah. downward on yeah. the deck. Yeah, you can see the <clears throat> the way the reaction is. Next up here, we have Scoops himself. Yeah, same. I got to play in and swing this ball out. Um, once again, a beautiful recovery to the outside. Yeah, it rolls up really nice. It, yeah. makes its, it, it makes its move, and it just rolls in. Yeah, it's... I don't really have to worry about this super strong kick through finish. See, it's right there in the pocket. Turn, bang. And like I said, it keeps those pins right low, just kind of kicks them low and back, and it just carries everything out. Uh, 15, 5, boom. Oh, that was a, you can a see scatter, that. yeah. Yeah, the pins were actually tipping rather than coming nose first, they were yeah. coming bottom yeah. first. Yeah. And the noise, I wish we could really describe to you guys the noise that the that yeah. uh, the ball makes when it was hitting flush yeah. it was much it, different yeah it was like um like a hard, thunk yeah it was like more of an echo than like you could tell when it was a strike like it was just a yeah it was a it, yeah it was a very enjoyable ball to throw well, you got like lucky on carry, that one yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> once again carry. it was, it was yeah. hit on the bottom of the pin not the top yeah now here i am uh, i played pretty deep with this ball 
uh, looks like I was playing about fourth arrow, 20 board out to five. It did surprisingly for a non-pearlized ball and non-shiny ball. It was still very quick reaction to the friction. Yeah. I got that one in a little bit farther there to 10, still held in the oil. Yeah, with Rob being um, a higher rev player with a, a good amount of speed, a lot of times he does kick the pins up, and you could see pins taking out near the top where you watch these ones. Once again, everything's right middle down. It's just keeping everything low. Yeah, that, that pin off the sideboard there hit mid-pin, not yeah. high. Yeah. Um, you know, you're not seeing a lot, of, a lot of super scouts, but you're not seeing a lot of... Um, a lot of pins barricading other pins up. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing. Is you don't need the scouts the way it's hitting them and pushing them clean down and back. It's just very clean pin carry. It's beautiful. Yeah. And so like yes. I said, it m makes that turn and it sets. Yeah. It's it's flushing through nicely. Split the 8-9 there. Yeah. And here is Cameron, our guest bowler, and extreme rev rate. Now, you can see he was really swinging this one. Yeah. Now, even there, you can see with those pins getting knocked up into the air, they were more bounced than yeah. they were flying. And he's another guy. With the, the higher rev rate, it seems to be like more up the lane, the good pins get up. And you can see, he's still getting pins up, but they're not everywhere. It's just kind of up and back and very clean. Yeah, and when you see those pins getting blown upwards, that's when you get a lot of uh, 10 pins left. And you can yeah. see that, that six pin off the sidewall there hit mid-body, so yeah. he's, getting, he's getting proper carry yeah. from yeah. it. And he's transferring a lot of energy downward. See, that was nice. Yeah, that was yeah. that was perfect. And you see, he's playing it. He's playing it significantly deep. Yeah. And you'd be worried playing that kind of angle about not getting the continuation, leaving a lot of flat tens. Yeah. You can see it's just charging back and makes that move, and it's there. It's it's very it's strong. Very, yeah, it's very clean ball. All right, guys, that about wraps up our look at the Deadly Aim from Hammer. If you like what you saw this week and want to find out more, don't forget to follow us on Facebook at Laneside Reviews. You can also follow us on Twitter at Laneside Reviews and subscribe to our YouTube channel. So until next time, guys, we'll see you Laneside. This program sponsored by Hammer Bowling. Nothing hits like a hammer. Turbo driven to bowl for all the quad two inserts and interchangeable thumb assemblies we use in all of our equipment. The Row Zone Bowling Store, located inside the Brunswick Zone, Mississauga, for all your pro shop needs. Dexter Shoes for the Dexter SST8. And Bowlerama for supplying all the lanes we film on. <laughs>